Hi, this is Kevin for Sonovert.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Audacity to split a longer recording into shorter segments and how to export those segments into individual MP3 files. Now you might want to do this when you've recorded a long recording of music and you want to split the recording into separate song sections and to save those individual songs as MP3s. Right, what I'm going to be doing now is using a recording that I made for a previous tutorial because I like the sound of my own voice so much. And um, what I'm going to do first of all is to show you what to do before you start processing. The feature in Audacity that I'm going to be using is Sound Finder. And Sound Finder works very similarly to Silence Finder. It finds the gap in between tracks and it splits tracks or at least it labels the tracks according to where the silences occur. Now the first thing you should do as soon as you've got your recording is to remove DC offset and that's what I'm going to do here with this track here. If you don't know how to do that is effect normalize and remove DC offset make sure that normalize maximum amplitude is not checked and just remove DC offset is checked now as you can see that moves the areas of silence to the zero line and that's exactly what we want I'm going to close that and I'm going to go up here this is the full track and I've already removed DC offset from this after removing DC offset, I've amplified it to the maximum amount. Now, I'm going to be showing you why I've done that a bit later on, but let's get straight into carrying out the analysis. We go to Analyze and Sound Finder. Now, because I've amplified it, I'm not going to change the decibel levels here. If I hadn't amplified it, I would almost certainly have to change the decibel levels just in order to find the silences. If you're using this feature to split a recording of songs, you might find it useful to change the minimum duration of silence between sounds. The default settings work very well, so I'm going to go ahead with those. Now I'm expecting there to be about about half a dozen areas where I deliberately inserted the silence during the recording. It's found nine areas and I can tell from making an eyeball ins inspection that these three labels probably refer to the same area of s silence. And, and that was the other reason I amplified the recording initially. I wanted to make I wanted to make it easy to make eyeball inspections where I could tell easily what had happened where there are multiple labels. Now because this is my own recording I know exactly where the tracks should be and I can tell from the way that the labels have come out I'm expecting an introduction of about a minute a short abstract of about two minutes so I know that these are in correct places and I'm just going to change the labels now when you change the labels you've got to make sure that the labels are accurate and the reason why is because these labels are actually going to be used when we export the tracks as individual tracks to mp3s they're going to be used as the titles of the mp3s so I'm going to move from there now to zoom in on this area where we seem to have multiple labels for the same silence and as you can tell we've got an area of silence some background noise and what's happened here is that the background noise has been treated as though it is content we just want the content so I'm going to remove the background noise and all I need to do is just to highlight the track and cut. Now, the benefit of 
using SoundFinder is that SoundFinder only labels the areas where there is content. And it leaves the areas of silence unlabeled. So since we're going to be using the labels as the MP3 files, we're just going to get content exported and the silences are going to be left out. And that's exactly what we want. So what I'm going to do is to go to File, Export Multiple, and what you can see there is the set of options which, uh, well, from which we're going to choose labels because we're using labels. And the first option, using labels track name, that will export using the label names that we've just inserted there. And as you can see, because we are exporting to MP3, it gives us the option to tag the MP3 files using the label names. And all I have to do is just to press OK for those ones. And as you can see, it's using the label information that I put in to provide the tag names. That's what it looks like when it's finished. Just hit OK, and your MP3 files have exported as individual tracks. Now, for your information, I just want to tell you in this tutorial, I'm using Audacity 1.3.12 Beta. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you've uh, found it useful. Thanks for watching.